Hey guys, I just want to talk about uh, something that happened uh, just two nights ago, actually, uh, that got me thinking. It's completely unrelated to normal topics, although I think um, I think I think most people will be interested to hear this story and certainly the story. But but what I've taken from it as well, the lesson I've learned. Um, you know, we live in a pretty secure house. I I'm, I'm pretty normally pretty pretty safe here. I feel pretty safe here. Um, we've got you know. It's a very hard house to access. Um, we've got the laser security system and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm pretty safe here. And although we don't have guns here in Australia, um, you know, I have devices, I guess you'd say, uh, that that I feel pretty safe, um, you know, should an intruder come into the house and, and, and want something from me. Um, but... I guess in in recent months we've become quite lackadaisical in our security system and and um, I guess I guess also um, you know we, we just haven't I guess we've been secure in our security probably overly secure two nights ago Yelise my wife forgot to lock the um, the, the the door the, the side door the laundry door and as if waiting for this opportunity someone actually came into our house actually we don't know how many people it was my guess is two two people considering the the, the sorts of things that they took from us we got burglarized the security system wasn't on as i said we, we've become quite lackadaisical to our own detriment uh and you know we also live in a pretty good area as well very very low crime rate but um anyhow we got robbed. Someone came in and took a handful of stuff, actually quite a bit. Three laptops, iPods, iPads. Uh, no iPads, actually. They missed that. The iPhones. Um, you know, all the sort of consumables, electronics that, you know, we really don't need. And it's funny, you know, now that they're gone, you know, I just, you know, okay, the phone is a bit of a, an annoyance, but we can get a new one easily enough. And, you know, out of all the things they took, I, I missed the digital camera the most because that was... That was something we didn't have. We hadn't uh, copied all those files, all those photos. So, you know, it's not about what they took that was the problem um, or you know, what left the sour taste in my mouth. It was more the fact and the, the mental imagery that I have to have in my head for, I don't know how long this is going to stay, probably forever, that there were, say, two guys walking around my house while we were in it, while I was asleep while my wife was asleep while my two kids in their in their bedrooms at the other end of the house while while they were asleep in their beds between three and five o'clock two guys i i estimate came through the house and could see them sleeping took stuff from their rooms this is my daughter's ds and you know that mental imagery in my head i have to live with that now and so does my wife and and uh, every time we think of, of that, obviously, <laughs> we're going to be a bit more prudent in our uh, security decisions and when we choose to lock up and all that stuff. But such violation, I mean, the, the, there's really no other word for it. While nothing happened, uh, the vulnerability that we expressed and, and the, the violation that we feel is, it's hard to describe just the you know, what if, the, all the what if questions go through your mind, you know, like, what if my daughters had awoken up to, to the, uh, the burglars and started crying, which obviously they knew would wake the adults up, what, what would the burglars have done to, to stop that crying, or what if I had woken up and, and uh, they had done something, you know, before I was fully lucid and able to, to defend myself, or, you know, what if something happened to my wife, what ifs? And we just let them into the house and they, they fully abused um, us, really. It's abuse. It's certainly mental abuse. Um, although they were just after their next hit, you know, they wanted to sell, sell the laptops and, and just get high. And they're probably very, very malevolent, uh, I'm sorry, non-malevolent people. You know, they probably just really needed that drug hit. But in terms of what they've done to us, it's, it's violation of of a pretty significant degree okay it's not it's not rape it's not um you know an attack or assault um 
there's certainly worse things you can do to people, a lot worse. And that's what got me thinking. There is so much worse and, and we've done it. We've done it as a race, as a human race. There's nothing more violent than what we've done to our own kind. Um, we complain a lot about the system that we're in. We complain about the bankers. We complain about the bought and paid for politicians, the Federal Reserve System, the non-sound money that we have, the, the this, the that, the, the, the police powers that are abused, the, the, um, the military and the crazy things that they're doing and what their people get up to. And so many things we complain about. Um, you know, YouTube is dedicated to all these sorts of complaints you know by and large uh, it's people on here just complaining really and I'm not saying don't get me wrong that there's that there's things you you know that you can't complain but I think sometimes we just need some perspective on things and the perspective in this case that I want to sort of maybe tell you what I've seen or learnt or experienced is probably the word um, you know, depending on which country you're talking about, only a few hundred years ago, in some cases still today, you're worried about when the next warlord or the next tribe or whatever is going to come and obliterate your tribe or your family or your friends and, and whatever, when they're going to come and, and, and rape your wife, uh, kill your kids and put you into slavery. I mean, this is stuff that the human race has suffered as we've evolved, we've built up systems around us, like the political system, like the, um, you know, the, the monetary system, the social systems. We've built these constructs up to help domesticate uh, the human race. Whether we've done it intentionally or not, I don't know. But as a result of this evolution that the Western world, at least, has gone into, gone through, uh, it's domesticated us. You know, we now wear ties. And, and drink lattes and frappuccinos um, while we sit peacefully on the subway and you know, walk to our desk job rather than you know, hundreds or thousands of years ago wearing uh, you know, um, a leather or animal skin, uh, war paint, carrying a spear, running over a hill, killing women and babies. This is where the human race has come from. A good book um, that you might want to read is called Guns, Ammo and Steel. I think I've got it in the right order. I'll, or Iron or something. I'll, I'll annotate it anyhow. It's something like that. Guns, Ammo and Steel. Talks about just the history of different races and the violence um, that that um, the human race has to its name. Uh, you know, it, the populations or the, the areas of the world where there's different types of people really came down to, and, and the strength of those civilizations really came down to well, interesting enough, the, the fertility of the land, because as the more fertile the land was, the less um, the, the man's resources had to be on finding food, hunting food, they could grow it um, and, and allowed them to do more scientific things um, or, or more um, constructive things in inverted commas for the, for the benefit of the tribe. Uh, whatever civilization and that usually involves making weapons, um, you know, experimenting with weapons, dominating uh, lands, conquering lands. Um, so fertility, it all came down to the fertility of the land, which is an interesting thing. But that is why Britain basically is Britain and, and, and the world influence that it had for some time. But, you know, it's a very interesting book and, and it talks about the Polynesian tribes and how they progressed Maori tribes and, and all that sort of stuff. Very, very interesting. Guns, ammo and steel. But what, I, what, what, what you'll find in that book is just how vulnerable every tribe was to someone coming over the hill and, and, and killing it. <laughs> I mean, it, it was really that severe. Uh, so while we complain about so many things that do deserve our attention most times because that is where we are now in evolution um, sometimes it might be good just to remember it's not all that bad while we can strive to change it we can still be thankful for where we are now the two are not mutually exclusive 
And I guess that's just something that I've, I've come to realize because when your family is threatened, uh, you, when your children are threatened, um, you never want to experience that again, ever. And when you live in a society, a construct, which that is generally not the norm, that generally doesn't happen, you're thankful for it. Because that is the worst thing in the world. No one should ever have to go through that. And, and although it's been to a small degree, my little story, it's extremely frightening. Uh, and I, I empathize and feel for anyone who's either you know, had children in similar situations or, or had children who have you know, been killed or, or you know, whatever. It's, it's devastating. So we've got a lot to be thankful for in that things like that are not the norm anymore. As a result of these constructs, these, um, this domestication, I guess you'd call it, uh, we are very much sheltered and we've got a lot to be thankful for. It doesn't mean we can't uh, and we don't have the right to change it for the better still again. Uh, but there's a lot to be thankful for as well. And uh, maybe if we could just all sort of remember that from time to time, we'd, um, you know, we'd probably live in a happier place as well. So that's it. Uh, I thought... Uh